Hi, this is Kath King from Seeking Health and today I'd like to talk to you about how you can eat more to weigh less. And I know that this sounds like a contradiction, but I promise you it's not. This presentation is for anyone who's reached a place in their lives where they feel like they've tried everything and are sick of diets and want a healthful, sustainable weight loss lifestyle that will keep working for them year in and year out. Today we're going to explore the role that calories play in weight loss, the role your metabolism plays, the role that toxins play, and the role of your mindset. And although you wouldn't think to look at me now, I've always had a tendency to carry extra weight. My whole family has, and for years I tried to keep on top of it with eating less and exercise. I tried diets and cleanses, which would work for a while, but then would leave me ravenous, facing cravings that just seemed to get worse. And after I turned 35 and life was really busy with work and family, I found that even my so-called fat clothes were fitting me way too tight. And so I'd eat a bag of Oreos. I knew that diets didn't work, but I didn't know what else there was. I was frustrated, discouraged, and felt quite hopeless of finding a solution. So I just stopped trying. And as many of you already know, my dad died when I was in my mid-30s from prostate cancer, and I'd also had my own health challenges. So instead of trying to lose weight, I focused on researching what was the healthiest and most natural diet and lifestyle for humans. And once I found that healthiest and most natural diet for humans, I also solved my problem with weight. And now I eat as much as I want, I'm never hungry, I absolutely love my food, I have abundant energy, I have perfect health all the time, and I easily maintain a healthy weight and a slim figure. And I love being able to wear anything I want, and I can even borrow my daughter's clothes. If you're like me, you probably hate being hungry. It makes you miserable, obsessed with food, and really grumpy. Also, you probably know that being overweight increases your risk of diabetes, heart disease and stroke, cancer, osteoarthritis, high blood pressure, gout, sleep apnea and brain atrophy, which increases the risk of dementia as you get older. You might have children that you want to be there for and lots that you still want to do with your life. But you've heard statistics like that the life expectancy of obese people is six to seven years shorter than that of normal weight people, not to mention them having a lower quality of life. You might have also found that your weight makes life more difficult. Maybe it's harder to tie your shoes, fit into an airplane seat or find a mate. Maybe you've experienced some form of discrimination or feel judged. You probably have lots of things that you want to do with your life, but your weight gets in the way. You've probably also tried many diets that leave you feeling hungry, lacking in energy, and ready to go back to your standard Aotearoa diet. So if any of this rings true for you, then this presentation is really for you. So let's get started with some facts about calories and the role they play for weight loss. Calories are a measure of the energy in our food, so they do matter, but they're not the be-all and end-all of weight loss. And while it might seem that you should just be able to restrict your calories and lose weight, it doesn't usually work out very well or last very long, and calorie restriction gets old real fast. 
Studies have shown that following initial weight loss on a calorie restricted diet, the levels of hormones that control hunger change in a way that increases your hunger. So whenever you restrict your calories, your hormones will make you even hungrier. And that's because we're designed so that periods of chronic starvation will trigger a strong protective mechanism to force you to eat as much as you can. Another thing that happens when you restrict calories is that you also restrict the energy that your body runs on, which leads to you feeling tired, low in energy, and lacking in motivation to exercise or to do much of anything. And finally, when you restrict calories, you also damage your health. Because usually, when you restrict calories, you're also going to be restricting the vitamins, minerals and antioxidants your body needs to be healthy. But when you eat plenty of the right kinds of calories, your body will feel safe about not needing to store them as fat. Your hunger hormones will decrease, no protective mechanisms will be activated, and eventually you'll have so much energy that you'll burst out of bed in the morning, fly out the door, skip down the road, and seize the day. Exercise will feel far more appealing. Plus, you'll be getting all the vitamins and minerals you need for optimal health. So, whereas with calorie restriction, you're going to end up losing muscle mass instead of weight. You'll lower your metabolism. You may even experience hair loss and bone loss due to not getting enough nutrients. Many people experience infertility. You can even experience heart failure. And of course, you'll be fatigued. Whereas healthy eating will result in fat loss it will give you a faster metabolism. It will give you stronger nails, shinier hair, healthier skin, a strong immune system, and abundant energy. Remember that not all calories are created equal. And that means that we don't need to eat less, we just need to be eating right. Here's an example of the difference eating right as opposed to eating less can make. You can see that eating 400 calories of vegetables is going to leave you feeling fuller than either 400 calories of oil or 400 calories of chicken. During a meal, the stomach expands and internal nerve receptors sense the volume of food and the pressure on the stomach wall. And these receptors send signals to the brain via the vagus nerve, causing the sensation of fullness. When the stomach contracts and empties, the desire to eat is felt again. So larger meals fill the stomach for longer periods of time and are more satisfying than smaller meals. The highest satiating power is found with high levels of dietary fiber and water and low satiating power is related to higher fat foods. Fruit and vegetables have high satiating values, whereas bakery products like cakes, croissants and biscuits are the least satiating foods. You can also see here that animal foods have more than twice the number of calories by weight as plant-based foods. That's huge when we're talking about feeling satiated or full on fewer calories. So we want to be getting our calories from above the line. And it just so happens that the most satiating foods are also the lowest in calories. Also, when you eat plant-based foods, you not only feel fuller, but you're also getting more vitamins and minerals and that means you get to experience better health as well as losing weight. You can see here the huge difference in nutrition between plant-based foods, those satiating vegetables, fruits, grains and pulses, and animal-based foods. And obviously the processed bakery style foods are even worse in terms of nutritional value. So to sum up calories, Traditional calorie restriction leads to increased hunger hormones, 
Traditional calorie restriction leads to lack of certain important micronutrients. Although you may crave processed, high-fat bakery-style foods, they do not lead to satiation. Animal foods contain more than double the calories per gram than plant foods. A plant-based diet helps you to feel satiated with fewer calories and more micronutrients. But another huge factor in weight loss is metabolism. Metabolism is how efficiently we use the fuel or calories we consume. And eating to satiation leads to a metabolism increase and decreased hunger, whereas chronic undereating leads to slowing of the metabolism and increased hunger. So as we've talked about already, you don't want to restrict calories or undereat or feel hungry. The next way to increase metabolism is with exercise. And yes, exercise is necessary for healthy weight control and just health in general. Cardio is great for burning calories and so is really valuable. It also has other health benefits and so should be included in any health program. But some other forms of exercise have other benefits for weight loss and increased metabolism. Strength training really increases your metabolism. Building muscle is so important because every kilogram of muscle you have burns 12 calories per day, whereas every kilogram of fat you have only burns four calories, of, four calories per day. And that's just at rest. So when you increase your muscle mass, your metabolism also increases. High intensity interval training, or HIIT, is just exercising intensely for very short periods of time. And high intensity interval training doesn't burn calories in the same way that lower intensity cardio does, but what it does, it does do better than anything else is to burn body fat, especially that stubborn belly fat. The next important factor to increase your metabolism is to keep it plant-based. Research has shown that vegans have a metabolic rate that is 11% higher than those consuming meat, dairy and eggs as part of their diet. So not only can you eat more lower calorie plants, but your metabolism will also increase so that you're burning more calories even when you're sleeping. Low fat isn't just important in terms of calories. Fat also interferes with your body's sensitivity to insulin and therefore your use of energy and your metabolism. Hydration may surprise you as a method to increase metabolism, but water is actually involved with almost every biological function in the body. So therefore your body's metabolism slows down in a dehydrated state. When your body does not have adequate amounts of water, your calorie burning machines, your muscles, slow down dramatically. Over 70% of your muscle consists of water, so when they're not fully hydrated, their ability to generate energy is severely inhibited. Another important factor to understand is that your body's ability to utilize fat as fuel is also restricted when you're in a dehydrated state. So combine these two factors and you have one slow metabolism. But no discussion about metabolism would be complete without talking about your thyroid. The thyroid's main role in the endocrine system is to regulate your metabolism. Every cell in your body depends on the thyroid to regulate its use of energy. If you struggle with weight, it could be because of low thyroid function. And one of the causes of low thyroid function is toxins. And that's also something we need to consider for weight loss. 
Toxins impact on our ability to lose weight on a number of fronts. First, environmental toxins mess with our ability to balance blood sugar and metabolize cholesterol. Over time, the changes can lead to insulin resistance. And as we've just learned, insulin affects how we use energy. Also, our body is very smart and it knows that if our body is being assaulted by toxins, it needs to protect the organs that are essential for life. So it stuffs the toxins where they'll do the least harm, and that's in the fat cells. And if there's too many, fat too many toxins, it will also create more fat cells to accommodate them. Your body will do everything it can to prevent losing the fat that's keeping your organs and cells safe. These toxins also contribute to weight gain by disrupting hormone signaling that regulates your, your metabolism. And lastly, remember that nature's solution to pollution is dilution. So if you have toxins in your body, you will also hold on to a lot of water weight which can make you look puffier, especially around your face and ankles. So we need to eliminate the toxins that are keeping you fat. And the number one way to do that is to eat lower on the food chain. Because toxins get accumulated, the higher up the food chain we actually go. So we're back to talking about eating a plant-based diet, fruits and vegetables. It's really good to try and eat as organically as possible, to grow your own if you can't afford to, to, be, to buy them. Looking at water, which is another way that we can eliminate some toxins, is um, a really good idea. So filtering your water if you don't have access to really clean water sources. And I guess associated with that are food storage containers. So. For instance, if you have to buy your water in plastic bottles, are they BPA free? Next, we need to look at the things that we might be exposed to in terms of our skin because our skin absorbs everything that we put onto it. So we're looking at personal care products, our makeup and our skin care and our dental care. And we're also looking at the cleaning products that we might be um, coming into contact with in terms of our skin and in terms of the fumes that we might be breathing. We also need to look at doing a periodic detoxification and just living in a way and eating in a way that helps our body to eliminate toxins in the most efficient way possible. Okay, so now we're going to look at mindset factors for weight loss. There's a huge mind-body connection, and this can be some people's primary reason for their inability to lose weight. Our brains fall into the pleasure trap. We evolved to maximize pleasure and avoid pain with the least effort which worked really well when all that was available to eat were fruits and vegetables with the odd bit of meat scavenged here and there. But it doesn't work so well when meat, dairy and eggs are abundant and easily had, or where concentrated processed foods are available. You see, what happens is that when we start out, we get normal feelings of pleasure from eating whole natural foods, just like any animal does when it eats its natural diet. But then we get introduced to processed foods and animal foods, which are a far more concentrated source of calories. So our brain sends enhanced pleasure signals because we're able to get more energy for less effort. Soon though, we experience neuroadaptation to unnatural foods and go back to experiencing just a normal amount of pleasure from eating them. But also now, when we eat whole natural foods, because they aren't as calorie dense, we experience a lower than normal amount of pleasure from eating them. The good news is that 
it doesn't take long to adjust back to a normal level of pleasure when we stop eating processed foods and animal foods. It only takes a couple of weeks to regain a normal amount of pleasure from eating our nat normal, natural, whole food diet. If you're overweight, it's because your brain has a reason for it. And if you try to force yourself to lose weight through calorie restriction, you're waging war against your brain. And this is a war that you're bound to lose. Stress is the number one cause of emotional eating and weight gain. You see, the primitive brain doesn't understand modern stress. It interprets stress according to ancient programs. Modern stress is interpreted by the primitive brain as immediate physical danger, famine or susceptibility to the elements. It responds with measures appropriate to the perceived danger. So if your brain interprets stress as potential famine, it will demand that you eat while you can. It will also slow your metabolism, enabling you to gain weight as quickly as possible. It needs you to be fat, and if you try to be thin, you're setting yourself up for, for failure. Chronic emotional stress from grief, overwhelm, sadness, fear, anxiety, panic, Depression, anger and frustration are often responsible for not only the cascade of stress hormones that get activated, which can contribute to weight gain, but also can contribute to a need to eat emotionally. And by the way, a thick layer of fat is also a great emotional shield. So to let the fat go, you may need to deal with the emotions it may be smothering. Finding motivation and creating a really compelling vision is also part of the role mindset plays, as is our conditioning about diet and health and our attachment to our current diet and lifestyle. So to sum it all up, a weight loss plan needs to address all these areas calories, metabolism, toxins, and mindset. And next week, I'll be talking to you about how you can put all these factors together in a very easy, sustainable, effective approach that truly allows you to eat more and feel really satiated with no counting calories or measuring portions that maximizes your metabolism, reduces toxins, and creates a skinny mindset. And that same approach will also improve your overall health and energy. So not only is this approach the most effective, I think, in, effect, in achieving and maintaining a healthy weight, it also reduces your risk of diabetes, heart disease, cancer, and normalizes blood pressure. And I'll be offering you a chance to get everything you need to put this approach into practice for the new year for a very special low cost. I truly hope that if weight issues are something you've been struggling with, that I've been able to give you some hope that you can overcome these permanently. So keep an eye out for my email next Wednesday. I really encourage you to watch my next video on this topic, topic and if you know anyone else who might benefit from this presentation, please share it with them. And until then, have a great week and I'll see you next Wednesday.